Hi folks, I decided to do the weekly overview first. Um, it's shorter, it's briefer, there's a lot of content that I've put out recently, and I know that this week it doesn't seem like there's, it, 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 there's a lot of content that is relevant and worth catching up on. I did the New Moon in Scorpio video yesterday that looks ahead at the next month through, through, through the lens of the New Moon in Scorpio. And what I mean by that is, I am going to do a monthly overview of November in a couple of days' time, and I know that'll likely go out on November the 4th or 5th, and we're five days into November, but it's a different lens, it's a different way of looking at the data. Um, so the New Moon and Scorpio video from yesterday's out. Um, there are videos that I've done that are relevant and topical, and I think kind of important with regard to the transits going through Scorpio and Sagittarius. Um, there's this weekly overview, there's plenty of content to catch up on, and since this is going to be a shorter or briefer video, I thought, let me just do this. And um, that way I'm not overburdening you with content in a certain sense and gives you time to catch up. Watch out for that Mars-Pluto opposition tomorrow. We don't have a lot of... Now, there are three Mars-Pluto oppositions, as you know. I've also done a video on the Mars-Pluto opposition, but just watch out for the explosiveness of that energy and the impulsiveness and the rashness related to that energy you know even as an astrologer you you know it's just it's just funny you say things and you do things and you 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 um, you, you anyway just just watch out for that we're, we're almost done you you almost need to get you just need to get through tomorrow november the third for now because the next mars pluto opposition is not till early jan and and Really, as we're heading towards, as as we head towards, um, as we head towards Christmas and 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 New Year's and and January second, third, there's a bunch of as we head to the end of the year, there's a bunch of aspects coming up that are going to be a little bit gnarly. But for now, you just kind of want to get past tomorrow, day after, um, get past November the third, and things should then start to ease up. It's almost as if if there's something you're trying to do, the energy of something potentially being thwarted or challenged is more likely to be, or or the Mars-Pluto opposition creating inadvertently, uh, even, a, a, a problem or a reaction is much stronger till November the 3rd. And then after that, it eases up. Um, until until Mars goes retrograde on December the 6th and starts to head towards the next opposition um, of three. So just just have that awareness. You may you may you may feel, you know, as I said, you may feel a certain vulnerability as you are heading towards now. November the third tomorrow is a Sunday and it's part of last week's uh, weekly update. But when I covered the weekly update from last week and you know, I talked about Mars opposing Pluto tomorrow and Venus opposing Jupiter tomorrow and Venus trining Chiron and Mars entering Leo on November the 3rd or 4th, depending on where you are. It's sort of, you may have over the last week and over the past couple of days, the next couple of just you might just be aware of certain things trying to happen, trying to come through, not trying to, some opposing ideas from what you're trying to get done. Not, you know, there's just this kind of sense of, is something going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Is it going to go through? Is it not? Is there some sort of weird energetic wrinkle that's going to be thrown in the middle of things? Um, yeah. So just, 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 gauge and see just just try not to give way to um too much assertiveness or rashness or impulsiveness or aggression uh aggression in general and even those other things i would temper uh but just 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 you know it's it's just another 12 13 14 15 hours at this point in time okay the week ahead we had the new moon in scorpio on november the first and the new moon in Scorpio is trying Saturn. The sun moves in to try and Saturn and make that aspect exact on November the 4th, Monday. And after that, on November the 5th, Mercury, who enters Sagittarius today, on November the 2nd, trines 
the North Node in Aries. And the only other aspect that is made next week is that at the end of the week, November the 9th, Venus from Sagitt is Sagittarius squares Neptune in Pisces. So once again, the aspects of the week are the Sun trying Saturn on Monday, November the 4th. The Sun is in Scorpio. Saturn is in Pisces. And this is a completion of becoming exact of the new moon trining Saturn. November the 5th, Mercury, which enters Sagittarius today from Sagittarius, trines the North Node in Aries. And finally, on November the 9th, Venus in Sagittarius squares Neptune in Pisces on November the 9th. And a couple of days after that, Venus enters the sign of Capricorn. This is, this is why I did those videos on the transits through Sagittarius and Scorpio. Because, as I mentioned in those videos, doing these weekly overviews without that context is hard. So let's break this down. Whenever New Moon is making an aspect, and I mention it to you, it's typically an aspect that is within five degrees of it actually occurring. I keep my orbs relatively tight at, at, at around five degrees. And the new moon was trying Saturn, which means, and I also, when it comes to everything except a full moon, everything except a full moon, I only look at approaching aspects. Some astrologers, even though the aspect is separating, will take that aspect into account. For me, it's separating. It has happened already. We might be feeling the consequences of that aspect without a doubt, without a doubt, but it's not, it's not something that's building. It's the Sun in Scorpio, trying Saturn in Pisces. The theme, for those of you who watched the New Moon in Scorpio video, with this New Moon in Scorpio, and therefore a primary theme during the month of November, is to bring matters related to the Scorpio part of the chart into alignment with where you want to go, and in such a way that you can help Saturn stabilize the Pisces part of the chart. Start to tackle structure, creative or spiritual plans. Start to bring order to a messiness related to the Pisces part of the chart, the house occupied by Pisces that's been continuing. And that may have started in November, uh, started uh, uh, 2012, but may have peaked into a crisis 16, 17, and has never quite been settled down. And Saturn's entry into Pisces since March 2023 is attempting to get us to deal with the reality of matters related to the Pisces part of the chart. So the sun, which acts like this massive spotlight and brings awareness. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose the light in about half an hour. Shall I turn on this light? Why not? Let's just turn on these lights so we don't have to get distracted by that. Um, the sun, which acts as this massive spotlight in the Scorpio part, with the, as I'm, with the new moon in Scorpio, it is now time for action. And we're still in the dark of the new moon. The energy and vitality may be returning, but we're still in the dark of the new moon. So, so the new moon is still dark. It's still, it may not even be entirely, it may not, the crescent itself may not be visible till, till tomorrow. But we're on the right side of the new moon. Energy is returning. The wind is behind our sails again. And action needs to be taken to bring the Scorpio part of our chart into alignment with both where we want to go, uh, with how we want to manage and use our resources to move towards what we value, and to bring it into alignment in such a way that it can support Saturn stabilizing the Pisces part of the chart. And with the Sun trining Saturn, the Sun is not an overt planet, but it is our clearest connection to source energy, the solar light, this connection to source, this illuminating matters related to the Scorpio part of the chart, every nook and cranny, every cobweb, every dust bunny, 
with the intention of doing an annual review of this part of the chart. We've already had Venus go through Scorpio. In fact, Venus, after the end of this week, is going to be practically done with Sagittarius. We've already had Mercury go through Scorpio. Mercury today entered Sagittarius. So the idea of bringing the Scorpio part of the chart into alignment with what we value, the idea of building on that with the Mercury transit and putting things in a more thinking, planning, wondering, mercurial realm, mind, communication has already occurred. And now with the new moon, it's time for action. And we may, when it, when it comes to the sun, it's a lot more, the new moon month of Scorpio from November the 1st to December the 30th is a time of action related to the Scorpio part of the chart and availing of opportunities. And as I said, we're in this kind of phase right now. I'm not going to do the whole Scorpio new moon video, but there's more there. There's context there. We may be, when it comes to the Scorpio part of the chart, as I said in that video, be waiting to see if certain things fall into place where we can establish and stabilize the stagnant quo and move the status quo, <laughs> stagnant quo, the status quo and move from making it stagnant to more fertile. And if it doesn't come through, we may realize that we need to make certain changes to release what is stagnant and move towards what is fertile. So it's a question of, do I stay or do I go related to the Scorpio part of the chart? Do I release things? Do, how, do I, how do I bring things into alignment? Can I avail of something to stabilize and enliven things, matters, themes related to the Scorpio part of the chart? Or will those things not come through? And that means that changes need to be made because the status quo is stagnant. And that's that's just the general energy of the time as well. And with the sun getting ready to try and Saturn in two days time would not surprise me at all if this question is absolutely top of mind in an inevitable way at least for the past three days and for the next couple of days till the end of day Monday. Now, the new moon will bring clarity on what the opportunities are and whether some people need to start making changes, whether some people need to uh, avail of certain things to, to stabilize the status quo. And again, if you're like, what is he talking about? Just take a look at that new moon and Scorpio video. This is why this is going to be a slightly shorter video than I'm, I'm giving you the key themes. But we we move towards Monday with the sun trining Saturn with an eye towards in a very clear sighted way. What are my choices in the Scorpio part of the chart? I'm aware of these choices. I'm going to have to wait and see what happens and how it happens. And then the ball starts rolling an action will need to be taken. And that action will need to be taken in such a way that it works with Saturn to stabilize the Pisces part of the chart. If Saturn is looking for greater austerity, discipline, resource management, energy management, emotional management, temper management, um, it's 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 less emotional to me, I think, as much as it's about given the nature of the transits that have been going through the sign of Pisces since 2012. I think it's much more a question of structure and dealing with things we have not been able to deal with before. And acting in ways that are truly acting in ways that move out of the realm of being self-sabotaging to actually helping us fulfill our highest potential in, that, that in, in, in the Pisces part of our chart. Protecting ourselves, setting boundaries, 
acting responsibly. And so the sun in the Scorpio part of the chart, very clear about what needs to happen over the next month to bring the Scorpio part of the chart into alignment with what we value and support Saturn in what he feels needs to be done to stabilize a very touch and go vulnerable part of the chart, the Pisces part of the chart. So that's the Sun trying Saturn on November the 4th. And it's a very much, very much part of the new moon in Scorpio energy. And if you want a deeper dive into that, take a look at the new moon in Scorpio video. Also, I mentioned in the Scorpio video that in November from the sign of Sagittarius, and with Mars moving into Leo tomorrow on November the 3rd, Mars, as he heads towards November the 17th, on November the 17th, Mars from Leo is going to trine the North Node in Aries. But before that happens, on November the 5th, Mercury from Sagittarius will trine the North Node in Aries. We've had Mars making these trines with important, slower-moving, bodies, points, planets, in cooperation with the faster moving personal planets. So we've had Mars and Venus and Mercury trining each other between Scorpio and Cancer in such a way that they've also trined Saturn and Neptune and Pisces. These are these water sign trines that continue to be encoded into the new moon in Scorpio and for the rest of November. And again, if you want to know more about that, take a look at the New Moon and Scorpio video. What I'm talking about as the second of three aspects that occurs this week, the Sun trine Saturn, which we already covered, is that on November the 5th, Mercury trines the North Node. Venus is currently in Sagittarius and has been in Sagittarius since October the 17th. On November the 11th, Venus will leave Sagittarius and enter Capricorn. Mercury enters Sagittarius today, and of course Mercury is going to be in Sagittarius till January the 8th, because Mercury will go retrograde on November the 26th, and on November the 7th, Mercury will enter the shadow degrees that he will go over three times in Sagittarius. But the trine with the North Node that Mercury will make from Sagittarius is he only makes once. This is kind of interesting with Mercury, where he comes from before he enters the shadow degrees and what he does after he leaves the shadow degrees. Mercury from Sagittarius is going to oppose Jupiter, square Saturn, and trine Chiron three times. But he is only going to trine the North Node once, two days before he enters the shadow degrees, and once he is done with the retrograde, and once he has moved past the shadow degrees, on January the 8th of 2024, he will square Neptune. So he comes in, initiates his transit through Sagittarius by trining the North Node. Lovely. Then he moves through Sagittarius, squaring Saturn opposing Jupiter, trining Chiron, goes retrograde on December 26th, trining Chiron, opposing Jupiter, squaring Saturn. Then he goes direct on December the 15th, opposing Jupiter, squaring Saturn, trining Chiron, and finally makes it through the shadow degrees and squares Neptune on January the 8th before he heads out of Sagittarius and into Capricorn on January the 8th. A trine to the North Node is a beautiful thing. Venus trined the North Node on October the 21st. Venus going through Sagittarius between October 17th to November 11th, asking the same, doing the same two things that Venus does whenever she enters a part of the chart. Is everything related to this part of the chart in alignment with what you value? Are your resources and are matters related to the Sagittarius part of the chart working towards your goals? 
or are they out of hand in such a way? You're spending too much. Uh, they're not in alignment. Or are they a distraction? And the second thing, of course, that Venus does is she creates opportunities and openings and plants seeds. Mercury coming in after Venus is going to move both the contemplation of whether matters related to the Sagittarius part of the chart are in alignment with where we want to go or not, and the acting on the opportunities that Venus has created, or in some cases even learning about the opportunities that Venus has created, because Venus may plant seeds and it may be behind the scenes, and so when Mercury comes in that we get the email, that we see the job posting, that we decide to apply for something, that something comes into our consciousness. Things move into the realm of communication and cognition. Cognition because we start contemplating, thinking, processing what needs to happen in the sign of Sagittarius to, as part of this annual parade of Venus, Mercury, the Sun, the new moon on November the 30th in Sagittarius, looking at the Sagittarius part of the chart and bringing it into some sort of alignment, a veiling of opportunities. It's not an eclipse. But it's a little bit more complicated because you've got that Mercury retrograde in between. Making things clear. Mercury retrograde, making things clear. I'm going to do, after this weekly overview, I'm going to do, in a couple of days, the November review, and after that, we're going to talk about the Mercury retrograde, and I'll explain what I mean by Mercury making things clear when he's retrograde. Some of you already know this because you've been watching my videos for a while. Mercury delivering a reality check when he's retrograde. But Mercury from Sagittarius trining the North Node talks about an opportunity potentially from the Sagittarius part of the chart to help us move towards this overall arc that we're trying to get to by the end of the first week of June next year, symbolized by the Aries North Node eclipses. Right now, it's the Aries Libra eclipses that are most relevant because on October the 2nd, we had a South Node solar eclipse in Libra. The week before and after October the 2nd, the week before and after December the 2nd, important milestones in helping us release what needs to be released in the Libra part of the chart. And this is this whole energy that we're dealing with in November around a stagnant status quo that needs to be released. Either, it, either something needs to come in in order to stabilize and refertilize it and make it more creative, either temporarily or permanently. Because it can even be with the Mars-Pluto opposition, as I said, something could come in temporarily that feels like it is preventing the Plutonian transformation of the Capricorn part of the chart, only to realize that by availing of something temporarily, it gives you what you need, either resources or relationships or something to help actually to help Pluto finish up the transformation that he started in 2008 in the Capricorn part of the chart. Take a look at the Mars opposition video. You know, the, the, the reason why I do these videos as I go along and keep saying, take a look at this, take a look, is so that when I do the weekly overview, we aren't spending a week talking about everything that's going to happen in the weekly overview. The things that happen here have context, larger, better, greater context in the more detailed videos that I have done. So when I talk about the sun trining Saturn, the immediate reference to it is the new moon in Scorpio video I did yesterday and the Scorpio transits video I did three or four videos ago. When I'm talking about Mercury trining the North Node and when I'm talking in general about this idea of um, this idea of being in this time that is <sighs> that is that is right now about releasing or refertilizing the status quo and whether it's temporary or not. Certainly part of the energy you can look for greater detail in the Mars opposition video that I did. And by all means, take a look at the October 2nd solar eclipse video for greater context for that as well. But coming back to the Mercury trying the North Node, 
you could hear about something, learn about something, think about something in a mercurial realm that is aligning you towards what it is you need to move towards in the Aries part of the chart where your growth is. It may, the North Node may promise more than he delivers and may deliver something, but may also deliver a kind of a, in, 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 in experiencing it, you may also get a sense of those things about it that you don't like or that are disappointing, but it's just part of the way the carrot at the end of the stick works. It always appears shinier than the reality of something is. But in its shininess with the North Node and the North Node eclipses, we learn, we grow, we develop. We pursue, we acquire the experiences that we are meant to ex acquire that are going to be helpful for our future growth. Always when we pursue the North Node, we are meant to do it in a grounded manner, financially and emotionally, because the North Node in pursuing what is right for us has this kind of sense of magic to it. And I typically see people protected, but it's a hairy ride if you let go of your reins on your emotional and financial, if you let go of the reins emotionally and financially with an eye towards your financial security. Because the North Node loves the feeling of magic and excitement around pursuing our purpose, following our dreams, following our goals. It's very much like the Fool card in the tarot. Don't jump off a cliff. And you may get that sense of, oh, this is what is right, and this is what feels right, and this is where I want to go, and this is what it feels like I'm being called to do. But there are reality checks that have to be um, incorporated. At the same time, it doesn't mean that that call is not important, that there isn't something that the universe of spirit isn't trying to convey to you from the Aries part of the chart. We're still trying to get as much as we can from the Aries North Node eclipses through the end of the first week of June of next year. And while the prevailing energy of the time has to do with releasing the status quo, these trines, Venus trining the North Node, Mercury trining the North Node on Tuesday, November the 5th, which is what we're talking about. Venus and Mercury trining the North Node in July, August, I think, when they, when, when they entered Leo. They represent the potentially the right opportunities for us, the next right. And so it's very interesting, you know, it makes me wonder as you head towards Tuesday, Wednesday, does something emerge that makes you think, oh, is this something I'm supposed to move towards? Is there some greater communication about it that occurs? Now, some of you may have felt like you got a sense of what this opportunity is or what came up around October the 21st, you may have acted on it, and it may just be further communication in that direction. For others, there could be some communication that comes up. Either you're... It's hard not to think about where you want to go when you're releasing the status quo or figuring out how to stabilize it. Just know one thing. Just know one thing. As I've been saying to you, getting to where we're trying to get to by the end of the first week of June, there's something that needs to be closed out in the Cancer and the Pisces part of the chart for us to land more comfortably into the Leo and the Aries part of our chart by mid to end April of next year. Mars is retrograde between Cancer and Leo. Mars is moving into Leo on November the 4th, November the 3rd, 4th, going retrograde on December the 6th, re-entering the sign of Cancer in January, going direct on February the 26th or thereabouts, re-entering Leo in April, Something about this movement suggests that something related to the sign of cancer needs to be closed out. And as Mars comes into Leo, by the middle of April, the energy is clear. What needs to be closed out is closed out. Similarly, even though the North Node eclipses are moving into Pisces, there is something related to the house occupied by the sign of Pisces that Saturn is stabilizing that needs to get to a certain point, a certain closure, a certain stabilization for you to really move into 
by the middle of April to the end of the first week of June of next year to land in the Aries part of the chart and feel like, okay, I've made the most of these Aries North Node eclipses. And so when I talk about things coming in temporarily, potentially, or when I talk about the, there's a kind of a stepping stone, a three steps forward, two steps back, a dealing with building the new and cleaning up the old, and recognition that it's not as simple as just walking into the new. That the new needs to be created and stabilized while the old is being released. And what this means is going to be specific for each of us. And so I'm trying to include all sorts of scenarios about something may come up for certain people where a status quo that is stagnant can be restabilized, maybe permanently, maybe temporarily, in such a way that it adds, acts as a platform for you to get to what the new is. For other people, something may not come it may not come in to sort of rescue the status quo and it has to be released for you to move where it, but November is a month of change. November is a month of accelerated change. There's no, as I said in the New Moon and Scorpio video, the door jam was kicked off to the side with this New Moon and Scorpio and the door is starting to head towards its destination, slamming shut. Do not resist the change in such a way that you find yourself in the way of something moving towards its completion. Follow the signs and follow the breadcrumbs and do what you need to in order to make the change a successful and as less chaotic as possible. And as and, and as as less chaotic as possible. Part of the energy, which is wonderful, that is developing in November, and is very much part of the communication December, is the opportunity, is the direction that we want to move in, and that is what is symbolized by these trines to the North Node. Mars is going to make three trines to the North Node from Leo, and from Cancer. But for now, on November the 5th, Mercury makes his trine from Sagittarius. Outside of this closing out something in Cancer to land in Leo, closing out something in Pisces, with the Venus and Mars, Venus and Mercury retrogrades in March and April, between Pisces and Aries, closing out something in Pisces to land in Aries by the middle of April. Outside of these two events, there's also something relevant between now and the end of December that we have to take into account related to the Sagittarius part of the chart where Mercury goes retrograde. There's, there's an opportunity related to the Sagittarius part of the chart that is building that we don't have all the information about, that is not completely clear and will not be completely clear with regard to what is real or what is not real until the Mercury retrograde is done and we're heading towards the end of December. But again, it's part of this conversation. In the meantime, the prevailing energy of the time has to do with stabilizing the Scorpio part of the chart and releasing what needs to be released in the Libra part of the chart. But the Sagittarius stuff is brewing. And Venus has already trined the North Node on October the 21st. And now Mercury comes in to do the same thing on November the 5th. So something from a, either you are thinking about where am I going next? What do I know? Where's, or something comes in from a, and it's very interesting. It's not, when I was looking at the astrology of the new moon in Scorpio, I talked about the fact that Mars trining the North Node was built into the new moon in Scorpio. But on November the 1st, Mercury was still, Mercury is right now still moving pretty fast. Mercury was still more than five degrees away from the North Node at that time, trining the North Node. So it's a very possible that communication related to this trine, even though the trine to the North Node in Aries occurs on Tuesday, it's a very possible that if there is communication to be come your way or communication around it or around something or... Um, 
you thinking about something or something related to the Sagittarius part of the chart having a certain communication momentum related to where it is that you want to go, what the opportunities might be that you can avail of, or you thinking about where you want to go, it's possible that it's only now developing for a few days before November the 5th, even as relatively recent as November the 1st, it may not quite have been totally present. You may be aware that there are certain things that are hanging in the balance that have a communication nature. Emails, conversations, transactions, things that need to be signed off on, communications that, that help you get a sense of, okay, where am I, where are these Aries eclipses taking me? Where is my point of growth in the Aries part of the chart? What do I need to, what changes do I need to welcome in related to the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in the Taurus part of the chart on April the 20th that's going to exercise its influence till the end of the first week of June of next year? What is Jupiter trying to end and begin? What auspicious new beginning, but primarily an ending, is Jupiter creating as it goes through the Gemini part of the chart? Because Venus does oppose Jupiter tomorrow on November the 3rd. Mercury will oppose Jupiter three times, November the 18th, December the 4th, December the 26th. So even though we have the new moon in Scorpio, it's there's actually a certain amount of activity from the Sagittarius part of the chart that can't be ignored. Venus opposing Jupiter tomorrow. Venus trining Chiron tomorrow on November the 3rd. Mercury trining the North Node. It's all very nascent. It's all very building. Our focus is going to go more and more into the Sagittarius part of the chart as we head towards the end of November. And those of you who know your charts, I am willing to put money on it are primarily focused on the Scorpio part of the chart and saying, how can I stabilize it? How can I bring this into alignment? What do I need to do? Is there going to be something that's going to come in to revitalize the status quo? Does the status quo need to be released? And what does that need to look like? And how do I usher in the change? And how is it related to what it is I need to release related to the Libra part of the chart where the South Node New Moon Eclipse happened on October the 3rd and where the week before and after December the 3rd is going to play a role? What is November going to bring? We can feel the change. We know stuff is brewing in the Sagittarius part of the chart. We are grateful that there are things that we are aware of a carrot at the end of the stick. But we are also aware that we are very much in this vortex of change. And it's either stabilize or release. And both will require action. And those who have to move towards release are going to, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, you know, you have to replace what you're releasing with something. But Mercury does try in the North Node on November the 5th. So certain communication regarding this future focus related to the Aries part of the chart, where do we want to go? Where do we want to grow? Where the opportunities are? What does the future hold? Some of that communication yesterday, today, as we head towards Tuesday, might intensify. But even yesterday, November the 1st, when the new moon occurred, it was not quite there. So it's something that's going to develop. Finally, on November the 9th, also a Sagittarius-related aspect, Venus and Sagittarius squares Neptune and Pisces. As I've been mentioning to you, the opportunities related to the Sagittarius part of the chart are really going to feel the risk of if the Pisces part of the chart is not stabilized, it can create obstacles or hurdles or sabotage what we're trying to... The, the entire larger astrology of the time is we are... We know we need to move towards the house occupied by Aries, the North Node the Taurus part of the chart with the Jupiter-Uranus uh, uh, conjunction on April the 20th, the Gemini part of the chart uh, with the Jupiter transit there. We know that, but we are also very acutely aware that the Pisces part of the chart must be brought into line.
And we're very sensitive to the fact that there's a balance between the two. It's like we're juggling both these balls in the air at the same time, where we're trying to head and how can we manage matters really the Pisces part of the chart so they don't spill over. And Venus in Sagittarius squaring Neptune in Pisces, we're going to have an awareness as this week goes on. Mercury trines the North Node. Venus, who's been asking this question in the Sagittarius part of the chart of the past couple of weeks and continues to do so this week. How can matters relate to the Sagittarius part of the chart be brought into alignment with what we value? And what opportunities has she been creating? And as the week goes on, we may acutely feel We may acutely feel the urgency. We may acutely feel the vulnerability, the dependency, that availing of the options of moving along the path that is desired and that we want to move towards. We may feel that we, right now it's in the realm of feeling and not so much in terms of action, which is a good thing because to some extent, even though the personal planets and the new moon in Scorpio trined Saturn and trined Neptune in Pisces, and it's a harmonious aspect, and therefore it's asking the question, what can be done in the Scorpio part of the chart to help Saturn stabilize the Pisces part of the chart? Having an awareness of where we're trying to go and its dependencies on how stable the Pisces part of the chart is will help drive us to make the changes related to the Scorpio part of the chart to stabilize the Pisces part of the chart. Does that make sense? As Venus already trying the North Node, Mercury is getting ready to try the North Node. Venus is looking at the Sagittarius part of the chart and saying, before Mercury really gets going into shadow degrees and well before he goes retrograde, let's Ask the question, how can matters related to the Sagittarius part of the chart be, be brought into alignment so that they're serving what we value? And here are some opportunities that can help do that. But Venus is also exposing the fact that whatever it is that we're trying to move towards by the end of the first week of June is dependent on tackling and stabilizing the Pisces part of the chart. And as that awareness builds and becomes clearer, we are more motivated during this month of Scorpio that started on November the 1st with the new moon that's trined Saturn in Pisces to say, okay, let's take some actions and really evaluate the Scorpio part of the chart and make sure at least based on everything that we've been thinking about, get that into alignment with what we value. And in doing so, Let's contribute to stabilizing the Pisces part of the chart so that whatever is being developed by Venus and Mercury trying the North Node from Sagittarius and Mars getting ready to trine the North Node from Leo and the full moon in Taurus conjunct Uranus trining Pluto on November the 15th, these expansive aspects can be nurtured protected, taken advantage of, harvested cultivated grown successfully by ensuring that enough action is also taken to stabilize the Pisces part of the chart. And that the Scorpio part of the chart is brought into alignment with that. So let's summarize. Let's summarize. This is why I did the Scorpio transits and the Sagittarius transits video. We have a new moon operating in Scorpio. that trines Saturn in Pisces. In a sentence or two, and I've said this 
a number of times in this video. I've said this in the New Moon Scorpio. I'm summarizing now in a few sentences. What actions need to be taken in the Scorpio part of the chart to bring into alignment with what you value and in such a way that it can help stabilize the Pisces part of the chart? Question one. The Sun in Scorpio trines Saturn on November the 4th. And this is very much in keeping with this question. What forward-looking things we desire, opportunities are being nurtured, planted? What aware awareness of what needs to happen in the Sagittarius part of the chart so it can be aligned with what we value is occurring at the same time and is very much in a more nascent stage of asking the questions, thinking about it, availing of opportunities that has an eye towards the future, the Aries part of the chart that we're trying to move towards. Does something come up that is dependent on communication, transactions, contracts? Are we thinking about something? And are we thinking about, well, what related to the Sagittarius part of the chart do we need to tackle or deal with to bring it into alignment? with Mercury trining the North Node on November the 5th. And in contemplating the future, we might become very aware of, if I really want to move in that direction and avail of these things that are coming up, then I can't have the chaos of the crisis related to the Pisces part of the chart overrun or sabotage this. So let me put my focus back then on stabilizing the Pisces part of the chart and the first thing that I can work on is what needs to happen in the Scorpio part of the chart to contribute to that stabilization. That is the energy of the time because the third and final transit is Venus and Sagittarius squaring Neptune and Pisces by November the 9th. That's it. For those of you who are just like, I don't know my chart and I don't know where the Scorpio part of the chart is and Sagittarius part of the chart is, I am amazed that you're still with me. Thank you. And for you and for everybody else, the general question is, if there's a desired direction, it's, it's, I'm not even going to stop talking about desired direction. I think the prevailing energy of the time is very simple. We know change needs to occur. We know that there's a certain status quo that is stagnant. And there are a couple of things we can do. Something fresh can come in that can revitalize the status quo so it's not stagnant or whatever stagnant needs to be released because at some point it will start to create loss. The October 2nd eclipse, week before and after October 2nd, week before and after December 2nd could be important milestones related to what is stagnant in the Libra part of the chart needs to be released. And the release of that allows us to move towards the Aries part of the chart, the North Node in Aries, that Mercury is trining, that Mars will be trining on November the 17th. And that trine with Mars trining the North Node is going to be encoded into that full moon in Taurus on November the 15th. That trines Pluto. And when we contemplate releasing status quo, etc., it naturally means change, action, a disruption of what has been done before, a new way of doing things. Even if we're talking about stabilizing something and revitalizing it, we need to act differently. We need to take advantage of things. In the middle of all this, as we head towards tomorrow, we have Mars very much in his kind of direct retrograde period, getting ready to, you know, making, by November the 17th, he will have made the aspects that he's going to make three times as part of his retrograde. He's going to have made the first of those. Trining Saturn, squaring Chiron, trining Neptune, opposing Pluto, trining the North Node. He'll have done that once through. And then the rest of the retrograde is, all right, now that that is done, now that the door is kicked open, Let's go ahead and refine, complete whatever needs to be completed in the Cancer part of the chart so you can land into the Leo part of the chart 
by the middle of April. But the Mars-Pluto output opposition adds to this what needs to be, you know, something can come in because very, very, today, earlier today, Mercury trined Mars. Mercury from Scorpio trined Mars in Cancer. Something can come in from Mars and Cancer that can, as I said, be something that helps stabilize the status quo and revitalizes it or creates the change. It's something that can temporarily stall, delay. But it's up to each of us to then determine whether that stall and delay is something that's actually helpful or whether it needs to be, you know, boundaries need to be set around it. And the Mars-Pluto opposition is, is, is often, you know, Mars-Pluto transits are transits of um, rashness, which needs to be watched for. All right, I will leave it at that. 51 minutes later, this was supposed to be a short weekly overview. Enjoy the week, folks. Enjoy the week. And most of all, most of all, most of all, whatever is happening from an opportunity perspective is still pretty nascent and it will happen, not happen. You'll be thinking about, you know, that concerns me less, even though two out of the three aspects that we've got going on this week are from Sagittarius, Mercury trying to north node, Venus squaring Neptune. The larger thing to focus on and contemplate with the new moon in Scorpio on the 1st and the sun trining Saturn on Monday. The first thing that requires attention right now is how can matters relate to the Scorpio part of the chart be brought into alignment with what we value and where we are trying to go and how what action needs to be taken so that as we do that, we can help Saturn stabilize the Pisces part of the chart. That is still, with everything going on from Sagittarius and opportunity and trining the North Node, blah, 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 that is still the focus for this coming week. Oh my God, I didn't do it again. I was supposed to mention at the top of this because I keep, my marketing is so ridiculous. I am running a special. <laughs> and I'm only announcing it on this channel so it would help if i announced the special at the beginning of these readings and i don't and you know it probably helps us to get to the thing bottom line is if you are looking i the and and please know that i timed again this reading so that anyone who has already written to me about this i have cleared all the communications and the and the and i've i've written back to you um and, but but the bottom line is i'm offering Regular readings for me for $100 to the first 15 people who take those slots. My 60 to 75 minute readings are typically, especially for people residing in the US or the EU, EU more than $100. So it's a discount. It's really going to be something that people in the US and EU can really sort of benefit from. The rest of the people, it's, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not that big a benefit. So if you are interested in getting a reading... For $100, 60 to 75 minutes, and I typically will talk for the first half of the reading without knowing anything about you, and then we open it up. But you can also help, you can also specify if there's something that you want focused on, etc. Uh, then please use the email address below and email me there. And even if you're not interested in the discount, but you just want a reading, use the email address and, and ask for options, etc. And I'll send them to you, and we can go ahead and do that. Why am I not? I might just do a separate video tomorrow just announcing this so that you guys can see it. Um, so weird that I wait till the end of the reading, so only some of you are going to end up knowing about this. But I did mention it the last couple of times as well. So the discounted readings are available. Uh, the people who've written to me that I'm scheduling, emails are all cleared at this point in time. Um, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, if you find the content useful, if I haven't given you a complete headache. Uh, I know that there's a lot of content that's gone out over the past couple of weeks that some of you may be catching up on. Um, next to the subscribe button bell icon, hover over the bell icon and click on the wiggly bell on top. You'll be notified whenever I do new videos. Comment 
on the videos, like the videos if you feel so inclined, gives it greater circulation. If you find the content useful, tell your friends, other people about it. I will leave it at that. I will leave it at that. Deep breath, everyone. Deep breath. The only constant is change. And change is... can be and is sometimes necessary and it really is If we're not feeling fulfilled or excited or motivated, changing whatever it is that's keeping us from being in that state is the only way to get to that state. And we know that certain things need to be released in order to get there or stabilized. So all eyes on the Scorpio part of the chart to bring it into alignment. And by all means, if there are things that are brewing that have a sense of opportunity and forward movement from the Sagittarius part of the chart, potentially by the end of the week from the Leo part of the chart, avail of it. Avail of it. Mercury will give it his reality check no matter what. Um, and indeed, actually, one of the thoughts I'm having is with Mercury trining the North Node on Tuesday, if there are opportunities that you want to pursue that you feel may be important, even if they're not exactly what you are, let's say that you are trying to create a state, a place, a, a, a reality by the end of the first week of June. If there are certain things you feel you need to do, if there's some sort of a side hustle you want to pursue, if there's something you want to apply for, get that stuff done by Tuesday. Get that stuff done by Tuesday as Mercury trines the North Node. You don't know which doors will open. Show up. Submit your resume for what you need to. Plant those seeds that might contribute or be a part of the future state that you're trying to get to by Tuesday. Primary focus stabilizing the Scorpio, it's, it's inevitable. It's here. But I just, I just, mm, as, as, as you contemplate the future state to create it, there's something through a communication perspective that needs to be done uh, by Tuesday. Go ahead and take care of it. Go ahead and take care of it. And just, let's just, let's just give it another 24 hours so that we can make it past this Mars-Pluto opposition in terms of rash actions. All right, folks.